friends and help them give back. I'm doing a blog and a video really highlighting companies that deliver profits, quadruple bottom line, and give back and impact society. Today I have with me Helen Russell, who is the CEO and co-founder of Equator Coffees. They're a B Corporation started in 1995 in, right here in Marin County. You know, I met Helen a couple years ago mm -hmm. at the local Venture Pad where she was speaking on Equator Coffees. And I was so inspired and impressed with the brand, your values, your chain of well-being, mm -hmm. and just what Equator stands for. Tell us a little bit about how you started and why you started. Laurie, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate okay. it. Welcome to our new headquarters here in uh, San Anselmo, California. And I remember that evening when uh, we spoke. I also remember the time that we met at the Equator <laughs> Coffees at the surf shop uh, at Proof Lab. Um, you know, Brooke and I started this company in 1995. We were in our early 30s, and uh, prior to that, we were we had two coffee bars. And prior to that, we were um, working up in the Northwest, uh, flipping houses, unbelievably, and saw the whole specialty <laughs> coffee thing happening. And uh, prior to that, I was selling voice and data networks for MCI. So Brooke and I were sitting in Pioneer Square in uh, Portland, uh, and she was having an espresso, and I was having a, a mocha pile tie with uh, whipped cream, and. And uh, Brooke was telling me all about the flavor that she was experiencing. Ah. And I said, I'm going to go get some more whipped cream. But I came back and I said, look, you know what? You love coffee and I love business. And that's what you think about when you're in your early 30s, especially um, here in the United States where, you know, the American dream is uh, starting your own company. So growing up in Boston as a blue collar kid to be able to come out to California and really realize that. So Brooke and I wrote a business plan literally on the back of a napkin right. <laughs> and went, down, went back to uh, San Francisco. Uh, and opened up two coffee bars called Europa. But the pivotal point there was nobody would tell Brooke anything about the coffee. Hmm. Brooke really wanted to know about the elevation of you know, uh, the mountains, where the coffee was grown, the potassium in the soil, more importantly, wow. how, the, you know, how the folks on the land were being paid. So when they wouldn't tell her any of that, she said, look, I want to roast coffee. And Brooke traveled around the world as a child. She has an amazing palate. So here we are, 1995, in a garage in Corte Madeira, there's only five women that are roasting coffee in the United States, wow. and Brooke is one of them. Hmm. And we start this company, and I said, look, we'll do this for about three or four years, and if not, then we'll have to get jobs. <laughs> so here we are. You jobs. Know, <laughs> jobs. I'm like, oh my god, that would be the worst thing. I'm so unemployable that I would get a job. So fast forward now, we have uh, eight retail stores. We're opening up three next year, 155 employees. We're roasting in Northern wow, California, Southern great. California, in New York. We're a B Corp. Um, I think what we're most proud of is that 155 of our employees have uh, full health insurance. So that's something that, and I get goosebumps thinking about it because we built that into the business plan and we've never moved away from it. That is amazing. And I want to I want to get into the B Corp thing yes, in a second. Yes, absolutely. Let's talk about how you developed this beautiful brand of yours. The name, the yeah. logo, the colors. Well, as you can see, we love the color red, right? As you can see, I love red and we love black. and. Brooke actually came up with the name Equator because coffee and tea is actually grown along the equator. Uh -huh. And uh, we came up with the Bengal Tiger, as you see, um, as our brand icon. Beautiful. Because we are women-owned and we wanted something that sort of projected grace, rarity, and power. Ooh. And we felt like the Bengal Tiger did that. And part of what we have now to honor the Bengal Tiger, and you've been in our stores, uh, we pay a five cent social premium to the Tiger Trust. So all the coffee that we buy some, from Sumatra, and it's over 300,000 pounds, uh, we pay a 10 cent social premium and we have rangers out there to decouple the traps. So when uh, folks come into our stores and the kids come in, I put little tigers on their jackets. And I, I have a tiger them, on my shoulders, I do. And I tell them that story and it just, it just resonates with them. And it's something we're so proud of that we can do. Oh, that's, that's great to hear. Well, let's talk a little bit about I mentioned that Helen was a B Corporation. And let's talk a little bit about what a B Corporation yep. is and how it impacts how you operate the business and your finances and growth. You know, B Corp was something that it was natural for us to be involved in. B Corp is a certification, just like an organic fair trade. Um, there's 200 um, questions that you have to take. Uh, Maureen mm. McHugh, who's our um, executive vice president and has a master's degree in sustainability, 
You know, I said to Maureen, probably, I think we've been a B Corp now since 2010, perhaps? Great. Um, we were actually the first coffee company in California, and I was so impressed with Patagonia becoming a B Corp. Yeah. B Corp is really about social, environmental, uh, economic impact, and it's a way to measure where you are as a company. And here we were, I was thinking we were doing all these great things, supporting our employees, paying a fair price for coffee, uh, the, the purveyors that we buy, espresso equipment and all those things, how we're treating our employees, how we're treating our customers. And so your farmers. And of course our farmers. And we'll tell the story a little bit later about how we own our own farm now and what we've learned over the last, oh my God, 10 years about owning our own farm. Truly a labor of love. But this allowed us That's to amazing. measure, right? This allowed us to take a measurement. So Maureen took the score and we just made an 80. I was like, oh my God, we're only an 80? We need to do better than that. So. We, look, we went back and we sort of thought, you know, talked about, Brooke and I and Maureen talked about how we can do more on the social side, the environmental side, and the impact side. And we were one of the first roasters to actually um, buy a, um, what's called a Loring Smart Roast, right? Mm -hmm. That's actually manufactured here in Petaluma, where it uses 80% less natural gas than oh, other roasters. Oh, that's great. So we've had a lot of firsts that we've been able to sort of bring into the company and be able to tell that story because people want the story. Right, customers want the story. The and you've got a great one. And we've got we've got a great story, and we've you know over. Thank you very much for that. But over the years, we've so many people say people don't know that. You need to tell more of that. And I think that's part of being founder led, right? You're extremely humble. You've got your head down. You're working. And then as you grow the company and you bring more folks into the company, and they're like, we should tell that story. I think that would resonate. So I tell stories when I'm in front of folks. But I think now. Um, you know, sort of adopting that chain of well-being where it's all really about stakeholder value. From the farmer, right to the farmer's gate, out to the export and the importer, into our own roasting facility, and right into the cup. You know, so we call it the chain of well-being. It's something that I talked about early on that just resonated with me. You know, stakeholder value brilliant. is very different than shareholder value, mm -hmm. right? Shareholder value is about, which is great because I'm, you know, look, I'm a capitalist. I think it's really, really important to make money so you can do more things. We think about being profitable so we can do more things for other people. Absolutely. Right? If we can help our employees get their needs met, they're gonna get the needs met of our customers. And it's just, it's just good business. And being a B Corp, you know, I remember I was interviewed about being a B Corp and they're like, well, a lot of people are afraid to become a B Corp because they feel as if, you know, they're not gonna be as profitable. However. <laughs> However, I mean, that's just not the case. I mean, we are a triple bottom line company that we have great top line, we have great um, you know, earnings, and we have an opportunity to continue to grow this business um, in a very, very competitive environment. As you know, there's a lot of great coffee companies. Now, in there the are Bay four area. ways to, they evaluate you. There's four pillars of B Corp. Do you remember what? Well, it's definitely social, mm -hmm. right? It's really sort of what your impact is, how you're taking care of your employees, how you're taking care of your, your farmers environmental, what are you doing on the ground? So when we right. think about what we're doing at the roastery, for example, I mean, having an energy efficient roaster is number one. We were That's definitely great. trailblazers on that. And economic, how do we pay our people? How do we pay a fair price for the coffee that we purchase? Yeah. So within all of those, there's probably four or five pillars for each one of them, right? And we try to examine each pillar and do the best that we can. I mean, the company is, you know, when we think about our mission statement, um, you know, to champion uh, kindness and connection through the portal of coffee. Mm -hmm. So the portal of coffee can be at the farmer's gate mm -hmm. or it can be at, you know, the threshold coming into our stores. That's great. Right? And being able to tell that, that story to our customers who are on the wholesale side, whether it be a LinkedIn, a Twitter, or a Google, and the guests that come in, you know, whether they're three years old, nine years old, or they're with their families and their grandmothers. and. Um, so it's about that portal of coffee and telling that story about human connection and kindness. And being kind is how you pay for coffee. You have to pay a fair price for coffee, right? So people can put back into their own, their own land and stay on their land and have opportunities. So we tell that story. If I'm sitting down with a wholesale customer like a Chef Thomas Keller of the French Laundry or I'm sitting down with a Google, right, at a tech company or LinkedIn, it's really important to tell that story.